Here we are at the South Point Sportsbook. In 24 hours, this place is gonna be packed when the tournament tips off tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., 9, 10 a.m. actually. Now listen, this is where you can get your sheets. All right, let's see here. Uh, oh, okay, baseball, we got that. Look at this, you can even get, this is even the sheet right here where you can bet on us, the on-air talent. Look at that, Frank favored two to one. So come down to the South Point, we got a huge party happening. All right, oh, sorry yeah. guys, we can't oh. record in here. Oh, no, no, but I, I'm Frank, I host the show over there, Punchlines. Right. A lot shorter than I thought. And roll the credits. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, I am Frank the Short Nicotero. <laughs> that was that was our security guy. I think his name was Austin. Whatever. Thanks for helping us out there. It's, it's tournament right. time. The South Point. It's it is it is heating up behind me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's T minus twenty one hours until March. Insanity. Can I say insanity, Ryan? I'm allowed to say that, right? Sure. I can't. I can't say the other thing. All right. Uh, I'm Frank Nicotero, longtime comedian, lifelong sports fan, and today's show will help you score a lot more. A lot of points in your bracket because we're going to have some advice from uh, some pros here and probably score definitely more than Virginia did last night in that miserable first round opening game. 14 points in the first half, and my man here had the shirt of the night. It's a Colorado State fan right here. Here's his shirt. Virginia basketball is Iowa football. <laughs> That guy, you know, that's, uh, by the way, it's an Under Armour. I like how he has it, like, he's sponsored, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is, and by the way, it looks like he made it last night with an iron in his hotel room. And he's like, this is going to be good. And it's not good. It's great. Yeah. Did yeah. you watch any of that game? No. And I'm glad I didn't because apparently they went 52 minutes of actual time without scoring a point. Uh, I had it on as I was uh, working on the masterpiece, as we call yeah. the scripts every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it was just brutal. And, of course, I'm feeling more bad because the Panthers should have been in, who had beat Virginia. And also, how about Indiana State? Put in uh, Larry Burr, Larry Burley. What were we calling him? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Abdul yeah. That guy? Come on. We want that guy. Anyway, they were terrible. Yeah. Did you uh, happen to see Virginia's eight-year stretch in the tournament so far? Well, I know they got bounced by a one. No, do you tell me. So they lost to Florida in the round of 32 in 2017. Okay. Lost to the 16 seed UMBC. I remember that, of course. In 18. Then they won the national championship. Right. Then they lost to a 13 seed in Ohio in the round of 64 in 21. Lost to a 13 seed in Furman in 2023. And lost to Colorado State last night in the first four. <laughs> now, going with that theory that they, they were the first one seed to lose to a 16, and then they came back and won the tournament. No. Isn't that what Purdue, isn't it? Yeah, Purdue. Purdue could, lost to Farley Dickinson last yeah, year. Yeah. So Purdue could win it. Yeah, I'm more hoping they lose again this year to a 16. <laughs> you don't like Purdue? Well, no, I just have the 16 seed they're playing in our oh, you <laughs> in, do. Our, in our game. Yeah. I see. Yes, we will get to that in a moment. Uh, it's a Wednesday. Alex is off today. She had to have a day off. We just flipped the schedule around. She'll pop in tomorrow. She's going to be here tomorrow because you know the game start a little after 9 a.m. here. So by the time we do the show tomorrow, the Duquesne-BYU game will have, have ended with Duquesne being triumphant. Yeah, you think so? My alma mater. Can I call yeah. a school that I went to for a semester my alma mater? No. It's the closest I have to an alma mater, Ryan. The school I attended. The school I attended? Is that what I have to call it? Yeah. For a semester? Yeah. Okay. I'll what do was that. your... My GPA? blood alcohol level 3.2, <laughs> blood alcohol level. Woo! Party on the bluff! Uh, on the show today, even though Alex is off, we have a great show. A uh, very funny comedian who may look familiar to you because he's made you laugh probably at your local comedy club. He's also been in a bunch of commercials, and um, especially here in Vegas. And you'll recognize him as uh, the 21 dealer in The Hangover. So Keith Lyle will be live in the studio. I just met him. Seems like a good guy. Originally from the Chicago area. So once I asked him where he's from, Ryan's eyes lit up. Yeah, we had a good uh, bear down intro. Yeah, okay, there you go. Uh, he will be here, and then... Uh, making his uh, third appearance on the show, the one and only Dave Damashek will be here. Dave Damashek and Chris Andrews will stop in because they, Chris is a big fan of Dave Damashek. They follow each other, so Dave will be here. We'll discuss some basketball and uh, possibly some Steelers. Brian, there'll probably be some Steeler talk. Yeah, yeah. We're both from that city. That <laughs> I'm not allowed to say the city. Okay. Uh, I want to want to show you. These are literally hot off the press. Chris brought these in. We have these cards here. So we have the jackpot parlay card. We have a teaser card. 
There's a teaser card for Thursday and Friday. Now, can you explain? He brought this one in, the jackpot parlay card, $10,000. Can yeah. you explain to people how this works? So it's similar to the college football playoff one that we did, right? So right. If, you, if you pick the most um, correct out of everything on it, right. you get $10,000. And it's you versus everybody. Yes. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, and how much does it cost to get in? Five bucks. $5 wager could get you ten grand. We have to do one of these, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We should can. do one of these what after are the, the show. What are the labels of the, the separations of the teams? Can you read those? Uh, the labels? Yeah, the, the between the first, every four, there's like a label. Can you read those? The city? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Uh-huh. Brooklyn, this is Fridays I'm reading. You want me to read Thursdays? <laughs> yeah, Thursdays. I know what you're trying to do. Uh, I have Charlotte. Yeah. Steel City, oh. Omaha, Nebraska, and Salt Lake oh, City. Okay. Keith, every time okay. I say my hometown, I get penalized $5 until Lent's over. And Frank Murgy and uh, B-Town Dummy, who watch the show, are begging for this to be over. I, I still have, uh, I'm still going to file uh, an appeal. Still do. I, that, 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 that Jeff Parle, I couldn't understand what Jeff was saying. I don't listen that's to him. That's not on Jeff, that's not on anybody but you. You I'm said I'm going to take okay. a drink for dr dramatic flair here. <laughs> We're also... 11 days from Easter, so... Yes. And I haven't had one tiny Cadbury chocolate egg yet, which for me is a record. I'm, I'm holding out till after Easter, and they're half price. None of those Reese's eggs? I haven't had any of those. I haven't had any sugar. I haven't had any candy. Oh, yeah, All right, let's go. take a look uh, at the... Oh, so anyway, do... Oh, but, oh, wait. The sheets are here. Hold on. There's one sheet in particular, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This sheet right here. You can pick this up at the South Point College Basketball Proposition Sheet. Ryan's holding it up to the camera. Which South Point studio host has the 2024 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament winner? So as you know, on Monday we did a draft show. It's just wrapping up now. <laughs> <laughs> we usually do an hour show. That show was, was an hour and 42. Uh, you could watch Caddyshack or you could watch that show. We don't have to work on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we already did two shows worth. Anyway, so you saw us draft. It's a fictional $100 purse, and we all we, someone would put a team up for auction. So this is what's the coolest thing. I've been gambling in sports books since I was 21 years old. So a very long time, let's yeah. just say. What's in, that? In sports books. Sports books. I've been gambling yeah. longer. before. I was, I was the book for a while there at North Allegheny High School in my hometown. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the teams that we drafted, Chris and Vinny over, uh, took a look over them and made odds. Yep. And uh, Ryan, I, I don't have – Ryan, who's the favorite to win, according to Chris? Which team? Um, somebody with one one seed and two two seeds. Yeah, okay, and who is that? Uh, That's Team Frank. Just say it. Just say it that I'm the favorite to win. I thought you couldn't read. I can read that. I can oh, read okay. my name when it's in big letters. By the way, why are you so bitter that I have a two one seeds and a two? I, so I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not bitter. I'm just pointing okay. out that's why you're the yes, favorite. I went chalk, but hey, I, everyone else wanted chalk. Not exactly. That wasn't – the point of our game. Drew Dog. Drew Dog has Houston as number one. What well, our game. Okay, what's your highest seed, Ryan? You have a one you have a one. I have my one. You have a one and a two. You have North Carolina. Yeah, you have yeah. your team. Yeah. Uh, yeah one, but the two, lowest five, odds seven, are on who? Is it Pearls? <laughs> it's on Jeff, but it Yeah. <laughs> but Jeff <laughs> I, But Jeff's fine with that. He's probably watching right now. But that's his strategy. He want you gotta take the long shots, right? But yeah, that that's the point of our Okay, not, but not, the fact is, you need the yes. winner. If you have the overall winner, you're probably going to win enough points on that to win the whole thing, right? In theory, well, but maybe not. If it's a one seed, the maximum you can get is, well, with the bonuses. Yeah. So it'd be 33 points. But are you telling me this could be like a presidential election? I could have the number one. I could have the winner, but not win the tournament. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Get the electoral college. Anyway, uh, this is a sheet. This is very cool. That there's that you can actually bet on me, folks. Um, come down to the South Point, bet on Team Frank. There's eight of us. It's going to be interesting and a lot of smack talking. It's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to have to frame. We we'll have to frame one of these. Yeah. If you like long yeah. shots, you can bet on me. Uh, and <laughs> and but Anne has you know Anne. I keep seeing McNeese State as a sexy pick everywhere to go like far. So I'm just saying you might have found a diamond. Saint in the Mary's rough. could be a sleeper. Could be a sleeper. Saint well, Saint Mary's. By the way, I wanted St. Mary's, but I, I got outbid. Ryan, not looking at North Carolina, what team do you feel you're strongest about that you have a shot of going the farthest? Uh, I really like Oregon and Drake. I like Drake. I love the Drake. We're doing well, Seinfeld references. Drake for goes into Iowa State. 
So Ooh. I, I They're both Iowa schools. One's in Des Moines, right? That's two right. Iowa schools. Yeah. And th- that the game that they'll play against each other, if that ends up yeah. being the matchup, it's, it's, in, it's in Des Moines. It's in Des Moines. So and it, who it's, has it's and who has those two team. teams? Yeah. Be me and you. Yeah. If it happens between Iowa State and Drake and I lose, okay. I will do a polar plunge. It's getting warmer here, so we're gonna have to find uh don't don't let them peek behind the curtain. Don't let them know. <laughs> let them think it's still cold. It still gets cold at night. Okay. There you go. So uh, that's it's exciting. It's going to be yeah. fun. The tournament yeah. starts tomorrow. By the time we hit the air tomorrow, the BYU Duquesne game will have been over. Hopefully, Duquesne wins. But this is going to be packed back back here. So we appreciate. It. Oh my God! Look yeah, at the live we, comments. It's already packed right now. Everybody getting their bets in early because they know how busy it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. There's a line out there already. Uh, so anyway, today is March twentieth, twenty twenty four. It's National Ravioli Day. Vanny, boil the water! Uh, And on this day in sports history, which we don't do a lot, but we have you and we have Keith, who's originally from the Illinois. Illinois, by the way, Sean. Thank you. Sean, do you hear me? Illinois. (laughs) Say it again. Thank you. (laughs) So we're doing the draft, and he leaned in and goes, I'll take Illinois. And the look on Ryan. It's Illinois. There's no no S. No, I just said... Did you just say the S? Yeah, that was it. (laughs) Trust me, my mom grew up in Rockford, so she taught me young never to say the S. So anyway, on this day in 1995, Michael Jordan took to the court after his 17-month retirement from hoops, and he lost to the Pacers. But of course, they didn't didn't do well that year. He had to get his legs back. Then the following season, when he played the full year, they won three more titles. Jordan was away playing baseball. And speaking of baseball, it's opening day. It was opening day today. We haven't even mentioned it yet. The Dodgers beat the Padres 5-2. to two. Yep. And you know why I know this? Because I was awake. We have a video of me watching the game. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan, this is proof. It's 3.24. I'm up watching baseball. I mean, this is, this is a fan, ladies and gentlemen. There's you, Darvish. You, Darvish, and the Dodgers are playing baseball in Korea. I'm in my underwear. Anyway, um, why am I not watching this in bed? Watch this. Uh, it's like the fifth pitch in the dirt. All right. Um, play ball. All right, I'm still in my underwear, but I moved back to bed. If Otani gets a hit, I have to stay awake. If he strikes out or gets an out, I can go to bed. Ugh. Damn you, Shohei. All right, I'm staying up. What happened? What? Excuse me. What happened to the rest of the Dodger game? Oh, no. Did I miss it? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What time is it? Oh, I missed the rest of the game. Oh, you guys are supposed to keep me awake. Oh, Oh, well, I did give the Dodgers out as a winner. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's me watching the game. There you go. Well, very well done, Ryan, editing that. Um, I was up. I got up. I was up. I was watching it. And then at one point, I'd settled in. Why am I up? It was too. Reno Paul. I got to give Paul. Paul's watching, I'm sure. Paul made it. He had the Dodgers minus one and a half. And he had Shohei Otani over one and a half hits. Nice. Yeah, right? So Paul. Very nice. Paul's off yeah. to a hot start. He probably had like eight other parlays on that game, but, you know, he only tells me the winners. But Reno Paul, let us know what you did. I don't. Is he in the. He might not be awake. He yeah. Might, <laughs> yeah. He's. He I don't see him. Up on sleep. But we got David Sanders in the chat saying 324. You lightweight. Game started at 308. I know, I know, I know. I got so up a you, little late. You missed first pitch. I missed the first pitch. But did I really? Nothing happened for the first four innings anyway. Did you see the clip of how the Dodgers took the lead, though? I did not. I have not seen the clips. I had to... So, top of the eighth, walk, pitching change, bloop, single, first and second, another walk, get bases loaded, no outs. Then a ground ball to Jake Cronenworth. Yeah. Could be a double the, play ball. There's a hole Literally in his, goes through his glove. He has a hole in his glove. Into the outfield. Yeah, yeah. I read about it. And That's, they took the lead. You might want to check with customs on that. There might have been some foul play there yeah. by so, uh, an agent there that had money on the Dodgers, put a hole in the first baseman's glove. Pretty smart. Yeah. They ended up scoring four in eight, four runs in that inning. 
and covered. I know. Now, all week, I've been giving the Dodgers out there a minus 190. Tyler Glass now got to maybe 200. I'm not a genius for that. I just think it was just... And now... Yeah, you pick the team with the highest win total to win a baseball okay, game. Okay, but I just... Well, it's, it's, I'm 1-0. I'm 1-0. And yeah. tonight, it's... Uh, well, today or tomorrow morning, Yamamoto versus uh, Joe Musgrove, former Pirate. He's a bulldog. That's going to be a good game, too. You going to get up for that one? I might. The Dodgers are the home team, so they'll be wearing the whites an hour earlier than it was today oh god it's a two <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what stay up just staying up meet me at the bar oh we're gonna get cranky frankie tomorrow i you know i have never i was cranky frankie one day on this show and we all know the show and right. you were cranky too we were both cranky we're talking about yesterday yesterday <laughs> oh we know who was cranky yesterday <laughs> Don't you make me point fingers. I'm going to bring in our guest, and he can do the collage with us. I, me? I was not cranky. Yeah, I'm looking at someone. All right, where's this intro? With Damn the, it. With Hold the on. eyes in the back here. Well-oiled machine here, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I just met this gentleman. He's going to be performing tomorrow at Delirious Comedy Club, tomorrow through Thursday. Wait, tomorrow through Thursday? Tomorrow through Sunday. <laughs> I typed that wrong. It's a new location downtown, Hennessy's Tavern on Fremont Street. It's Keith Lyle, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Keith. Hi. Keith, sorry, but it. I'm like, he's performing okay. today it, through it, Thursday. Maybe it's the keto diet. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> See, I need some sugar. That, or, or maybe you should just say Pittsburgh. No, I'm not allowed to say, <laughs> Keith, I can't say, I saw you. Uh, Keith, yeah. you, you came into the chat <laughs> while he's standing over there <laughs> and typed in all caps the P word. Trying to get me here. Pull the mic. Is he pull the mic a little closer? Yeah, to you? Close there you go. Okay. Just pull it to you. You can right, pull a little big thing there. Anyway, yeah. uh, Keith, we've never met, and we were talking yeah. Chicago sports. We were talking sports, and uh, thank you for coming on the show, Bob oh, Zaney pleasure. and Aaron O'Connor. Bob yeah. Zaney recommended me. Said uh, Keith's a funny guy, and thanks. you've had quite an impressive Vegas run here. Haven't oh you? yeah. Well, you know, I originally um, I've been here since '94. I moved here. I was on a basketball scholarship for UNLV. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why are we? What? I didn't play. I okay. just wrote all their papers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how were their grades? They were very good. Sean Marion owes me, by the way. <laughs> the uh, Matrix? Owes they, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That money, uh, Sean. He did, yeah. I took some tests, too. Uh, mostly urine. The, um... <laughs> <laughs> You pat, they Keon, those? Keon Clark, yes. Okay. Thank you, thank me. Oh, I remember him. Uh, yeah, big tall guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, I just, it was the way I paid my way through school was working in the casinos as okay. a dealer. So, um, and you were dealing blackjack, a, blackjack, craps, uh, roulette, the whole thing. And, uh, when I graduated school, the first job as a communications major is no money. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm already working on the strip making, you know, 35, 40 grand a year. You know, how am I going to leave that? And right. I just stuck with it. And then one day, uh, I was working in the casino. And uh, the player said, you know, you're funnier than the guy we paid big money for last night. Okay. I was like, really? So uh, one thing led to another. I started trying to do open mics and then... Oh, come on. Boom. Uh, I took some classes at Second City Las Vegas. Right. And uh, got an agent and then hit the hangover and, here and you the rest are. is history. Yeah. Now that's, and by the way, the man who told him he was funnier... Jerry Tarkanian. Is that yes. a true story? Yes, Jerry yeah. Oh, yeah, Jerry. Yeah. So, yeah, tell us about The Hangover. Now, I know okay. I think we have a clip of it, Ryan. Oh, You're going to yeah. show it as a little B-roll or is there audio on it? Do you want to show uh, it now? I mean, it yeah, be. it's just a little music. Okay, then, just a little yeah, music yeah. here. Here we go. Uh, the Hangover, lines. we've all seen a million yeah. times. Uh, oh. I've seen The Hangover 2 a million times. The Hangover 3, uh, not a million times. There, there it's Keith Lyle. Yes. Bam. Look at that. Sprayed in hair and giant <laughs> forehead. And he's Right. He's crushing numbers. My real hands. Charlie, 10,000. Change only 10,000, baby. There you go. There it is. Yep. Get now, a now, a lot of people might know this already, but residuals kick in, and the more money a movie makes, and the lot, you had to have done pretty well from that. Uh, I got uh, four lines. I get residual checks three, four times a year, yeah. and I spend it at that bar right over there. <laughs> yeah, right there. Debbie! Right. Debbie's the bar manager. Line them up. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be money coming in for a long for time. For a long time. The first year, uh, I think... I made like fourteen or fifteen grand. It was like ridiculous, and yeah, for like, nothing for four days of work. Yeah, and they were just milking the clock to because they had a budget. They had to spend the budget. I mean, it was it was amazing. So what was it like being on set? And, and, oh, Bradley uh, Cooper. They were every, they said it was the most laid back set they'd ever been on. Uh, that my hair and makeup lady had done um, Dream Girls. Oh, wow. and you know, so <laughs> she was like Beyonce's yelling yeah. at uh, Eddie Murphy, Jennifer and Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. Eddie Murphy's going through divorce. He's yelling <laughs> on the phone. They say action and he's on like that you know uh 
Jamie Foxx. She said it was like everything was so uptight. And she said, right. this is the most. She said, I'm sorry this is your first film because nothing will measure up to this. Right. And uh, she was she was right. It was right. great. It was fantastic. All the guys were, were wonderfully nice. Um I got to, the, the money in that scene is real, okay. and I was pranking the prop guy. I was hiding the, the, the hundreds. <laughs> of uh, one of the producers was playing. It was filmed at the Riviera. Oh, and I was the, wondering. Okay, yeah, yeah, and it was it was live casino. So the, we, there, were, there was a guy yelling through the whole thing. His roulette numbers. They paid him to shut him up. It yeah, was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which he put right back on the table. Absolutely. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, seventeen. Like, shut up. You want to be in the movie? And uh. <laughs> Uh, one of the producers was playing blackjack, and Bradley Cooper and I were watching him play, and I was giving him the basic strategy, yeah, do right. this, do this, do this. And he was up pretty good. He was playing $25, $50. I was explaining, this is how you do it. Uh, we went to shoot something, and I come back. He's got nothing. I go, what happened? He goes, I, I, no one was here to help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me and Bradley just look at each other. <laughs> the uh, lessons didn't sink yeah, in. Yeah, and let me tell you how cool Bradley Cooper was. Uh, my wife, was. I got her on as an extra, oh, and cool. uh, we sat next to him at a dinner, and he did not hit on her, and I thought that was really <laughs> Nice. <laughs> because by, and that's good for you. Uh, who because, could say no? Yeah, I and mean, he, you uh, almost have to go. I would have. I, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah honey, I, I get it. Uh, go for it. Come to my trailer, buddy. You know. Uh. <laughs> and in that scene, obviously, Zach Galifianakis. Now, a lot of people didn't know who Zach was before that movie, but I mean, I had known him from I, the stand-up circuit. He's great. I knew him from stand-up. Okay. I had uh, just seen his live at Purple Onion, which, by the way, was the first Netflix comedy special. Was it really? Yeah, that was the first one they did. And uh, I was just starting to get into stand-up. Okay. I was doing improv. I was just starting to get into stand up and uh he would sit at lunch and tell me like just different things how to you know get up anytime wow. you can how bad to open he had done an open mic here uh <laughs> a couple of years earlier he had already been zach galifianakis right. and the guy running the mic had no idea who he was <laughs> uh, it was it was he said it's going to be terrible but you have to do it and he went through everything with me and introduced me to brody stevens and uh, we did brody, the whole, yeah. yeah 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 so i mean it was I, it couldn't have been better eight years later i'm stand, being a stand-in for jonah Hill oh. in the movie War Dogs. Oh, I I love that. Miles Teller is yeah, yeah, they're Miles selling Teller. nuclear arms. Yeah. Yes. Bradley Cooper sees me and introduces himself to me. He goes, I know you, don't I? Come on. And I'm like, yeah, I was a dealer in a hangover. He goes, oh my God, it's good to see you. How you been? He says, I'm, uh, are you going to be here tomorrow? I'll catch up with you. And the next day, he hung out with me for 20 minutes catching up. Come on. It was amazing. Yeah. And it was the same director. So if there's no, if there is, yeah. there's no reasons to hate Bradley Cooper. No, he's the nice, I mean, he had no, Entourage, nothing. Oh wow! Uh, he was just the nicest, nicest. He's the nice, nicest it's guy. It's nice that he remembered you, and yeah. he was like, "Oh yeah, I hit on your wife." You look familiar. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh yeah, I could have been with your wife. Been with your she wife. was. But she I, was the blonde lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so what was that? Uh, Jonah Hill. So you stood in for Jonah Hill. So I did that twice. That, that I did shot it. here too? I don't remember. Was uh, a couple scenes? of days were, okay. were here. And uh, I, stood, I, I stood in for Jonah Hill on Get Him to the Greek, which was six days. Oh, my God. That's one of my favorite movies. That movie was so good. So what they underrated. shot and what they aired were two different things because oh. the stuff we shot here was like six days and it was a lot of P. Diddy. And P. Diddy is funny. He was great in that movie. He's he is really so funny. funny. He improvised a scene where he's like, oh, you got all you got to do is get this guy to the Greek theater. I had to get James Brown to the... <laughs> the, um, the Apollo? The Apollo. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, really? The Apollo? He goes, yeah, but he was in Detroit with white women. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, he had two white women. And this is Diddy telling the story. And he's like, yeah, it's, well, how did you do that? He goes, oh, I had a, a whole bunch of the beer he liked and some salad dressing for his hair. <laughs> It was like, what? And then the cut, and then he goes, that's a real story. Like yeah, right. James Brown was telling me, like, in order for them to get him to leave Detroit to go do the show at the Apollo, they had to give him, you know, more white Some women. Ladies. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Diddy that's how I got this awesome. job, too, by the way. Yeah. White women? Yeah. <laughs> um, Diddy is so funny in that movie. When he's running down the strip after, have you ever seen Get Him to the Greek? Yeah. Anybody back there? Yeah. Oh, hysterical movie. So underrated. The music's good, too. The yeah. Russell Brand songs are actually yeah. good. But that starts out with the African child and what's her name? Rose Bur uh, Rose Byrne. Uh, 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 the, the girl. Yeah, Byrne. Byrne. She was in Mad Men. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, it's Rose, great. Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne. Yeah, she was also in Bridesmaids. She plays. Yeah. Uh, Russell Brand's ex. Anyway, yes. the movie's hysterical. Byrne, yes. The scene where they are, they take mushrooms or whatever they do in the, and the, and the fuzzy wall and yeah. all that. That scene and, and the fire, it's one of the fun. I remember being in the theater laughing my ass off of yeah, that. They, um, Oops, the, can I save that? 
I say laughing. We're not. Oh, we are on the sports book. Okay. I just said laughing. <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah. Uh, the um, well, if we were in the race book, it'd be different. It'd this be fine. One thing, yeah, yeah. This is the one thing I like about the sports book is they separate the you know race degenerates from the sports degenerates. <laughs> yeah, we know what we're doing. Here. So yeah, you don't have to hear them yelling, "Go to the whip, Jose!" <laughs> Come with the every three. Race. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Uh, but Jonah Hill, I mean, yeah. did you he get to talk nice. with him? Oh, yeah, we, 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 he, he's no Bradley Cooper. No, no, okay. he, um, he's kind of a method kind of guy. So when yeah. he's in character, he kind of wants to do his thing and be right. that guy. So that was it. But Russell Brand was awesome. Oh, uh, cool. It was right at the start of like when I just started on Twitter and, um, I got him to tweet, he tweeted my handle. And, uh, next thing you know, I got like 80,000 followers. Oh my God. And I'm like, do you mind if I like tweet a picture of your boot and stuff? He goes, just understand that these people are are really really <laughs> big fans. Wow! And uh, yeah, I was tweeting at them and giving them all this, and uh, I still wow. have like a bunch of followers. Such uh, a funny movie, man! God, yeah. I remember that them running down the street. Yeah, well, that, and, that was a weird scene because I, I Diddy had like all these bodyguards, like big uh, Hispanic bodyguards with him. I'm like, this guy, uh, big timing with yeah, these right. bodyguards. But people come up to him on the street and hand him like mixed CDs. Oh my God, that's why So I Yeah, yeah. And you got to remember, like, this is where Tupac was shot and he was in the car with Biggie. <laughs> that's true. So, you Jeez. know, he, him out on the street at four in the morning when we're shooting this thing, I'd be, yeah, a little nervous too. Uh, he's uh, By the way, he's also in the movie Made, which is a very underrated yeah, Vince yeah. Vaughn, John Favreau movie, yeah. where he plays kind of the same role. But, it, it, um, He's it's great weird now. that both those guys, um, P. Diddy and Russell, are having issues with things yeah. that they may have done. Yeah. And I saw nothing. Okay, that's uh, good to hear. I saw absolutely nothing. Russell had a girlfriend. I think it was it was his assistant or hair something. P. Diddy had, I mean, he had the guy doing his social media. I mean, there was nothing going okay, on. Okay, good to know. So Now, speaking, let's just talk about you being uh, at the club this week. Yeah. Now, it just moved locations, right? Yeah, it moved. Uh, it was, it's this, this club uh, was in the downtown Grand for a while, right. and then um, they lost their lease, and they went into, we were at a nightclub for a minute and okay. now we're at Hennessy's downtown and uh, for the viewers here yes. on Punchlines yes. if they go to delirious.com get their tickets and type in and they'll check out opening okay. they'll get in free this weekend just type the word opening opening at the checkout, you'll get in free, free this weekend. Free tickets to a comedy club this weekend. You got to do it downtown. If you're yeah, if you're in town, March Madness. Show yeah, yeah we'll uh, drink your uh, losers away. <laughs> and who are you working with? Uh, but headliners Don Barnhart. Oh, okay. This uh, is the guy. We're gonna hopefully there, we're yeah. gonna have Don on the show. Yeah. in a week or two. But literally, when I contacted him, he's like, "I'm hanging lights. Yeah. We're opening in two days. I'll hit you up next week, man. Can't wait." So he's, he's a seen... very hands-on guy. Yeah, I yeah, like it. Yeah. All right, tremendous job, Keith. Very, oh, very funny. Uh, you're welcome to come back anytime. Uh, and who are to. you rooting for in the call in, in March Madness here? Uh, I would say Pittsburgh, but they're not in it. Uh, mm. <laughs> I think um, I think Auburn's going to make a run. I like Bruce Pearlstein this year. It might no, be. I liked Auburn. Yeah, uh, Auburn. Everyone it might be his Alex time. Uh, and I also think that, believe it or not, Gonzaga. All these years, they've been a number one, number two yeah. seed. Now they're number five. No one's talking with about no them. one on their team. They may just skate right through. And you can't look past the Japanese Steph Curry and Nebraska. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna t I love him. I love this guy. I've been watching the highlights. I was watching the highlights with sound off. I'm at home. I'm working. I see a red and white uniform. I'm like, he's on NC State. So I realize I got, I have Nebraska. Right. I have Nebraska. Inadvertently, I get that guy who's well, awesome. That's why you're the favorite, Frank. That's why. I'm the that's favorite. why you're the favorite. Two to one, baby. All right, we're gonna take a commercial ten break, eight, Keith. Ten tremendous ten job, eight, and eight, we'll eight. be back with the uh, one and only from my hometown that I'm not allowed to say the name or Pittsburgh? I'll get fined. He can say it. That doesn't Pittsburgh. cost me $5. Two Damn tickets to Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's an Eddie Money song. We'll be right back with Chris Andrews as well. South Point is also proud to provide a variety of relaxing amenities for the guests who want to be pampered. Soak up the sun and let your stress melt away in our lagoon-style paradise swimming pool. A relaxing getaway where you can bask in the desert sun and enjoy seasonal food and bar service poolside. And if you really want to escape, come to Spa Costa del Sur. From couple suites to a co-ed wet area, our spa caters to business and leisure travelers who want to unwind and elevate their senses. A visit to one of our spa's steam, sauna, or whirlpool treatment rooms will leave any guest feeling like they can take on the world. gaming amenities include over 60 table games and over 2,600 of the most popular slot and video poker machines. We have penny slots, including the popular Buffalo games and real machines like Wheel of Fortune, Triple Sevens, and Megabucks. 
If you prefer video poker, try Deuces Wild, Double Double Bonus, or a variety of multi-denomination games. Or try your hand at one of the most popular casino table games in the world, Blackjack. Don't let the game intimidate you. Blackjack, also known as 21, is both easy and fun. And our dealers are always happy to assist. And the best part, Blackjack always pays three to two. Next, check out the roulette tables. Roulette is one of the easiest casino games to learn and so much fun to play. It's a favorite of both beginners and seasoned players. In addition to blackjack and roulette, our casino pit features over 60 popular table games like Baccarat, Pie Gal Poker, Three Card Poker, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, and Mississippi Stud. So get out of your room and come join in the fun. Parents on the video store. Uh, if you only knew what we were just talking about. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Keith Lyle was tremendous. I'd never met Keith. He was good, yeah. Great stories about Bradley Cooper and working on The Hangover. Probably see a comedy cut of that in our shorts. By the way, if you want to see highlights of our show, a lot of the time Jerry and Caden do such a great job cutting like our funniest moments into little shorts, which are about a minute. You can find them on Twitter. But also, if you're on our YouTube page, just click the word shorts, and uh, there's a lot of good stuff here. This guy always gives us good stuff. This is his third time on the really? program. Do we got to get him a robe with uh, uh, like the five timers? Yeah, oh, the five okay. timer club. Well, that's only for the five timers. That's for okay. Dwayne Colucci and uh, Kevin Belenkoff and Denny Nagel, of course. But this gentleman is from my hometown, which I can't say, or I get fined five dollars during Lent. It's Dave Damashek is back from the show. Yay, Dave! What's, yeah, up? what's up, Jens? Yeah, what's up? I hope that uh, robe comes with some fries on it. Um, <laughs> How are we? What a pleasure to see you once again. And we have a little distraction called the NCAA a basketball bit. tournament to distract us from the rolling conversation about the Pittsburgh Steelers right. quarterback room. Right. Let, let's let's go to basketball first since we're coming right. Let, we got Chris here. Chris is th working like a dog. It's busy. I mean, this is nothing, right? Tomorrow oh, it's going to be yeah, insane. This is nothing. Yeah. Now, Dave, do you ever come for the tournament to Vegas? I used to faithfully, I haven't been there in a couple of years, but Sweet 16 to me was always the sweetest spot, the sweetest weekend on the calendar to be in a, in a book watching the games and everything. And then we kind of, me and my pals who meet up out there every year, switched it to the divisional round okay. of, of the NFL. And then right after we did that, I started to work uh, covering the NFL and have never been able to make any of those weekends. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, that's, you, uh, that's, uh, did you watch Virginia's performance last night? Did you watch any of the Virginia? I'm not watching none of it. <laughs> I, I, I'm a man of justice, and I'm my, my listen. If Kid Rock can shoot cans of beer, I can turn my TV <laughs> to a channel that isn't featuring a fraudulent basketball tournament yes. that doesn't include a team. We're talking about 34 at large bids yeah. and pit. Didn't get one of them the four. I Forget know. the name. You don't have to say. I know. Just exactly. look at the I'm allowed resume. to say Pitt. Yeah. Fourth place in a power conference. The diminishment of the ACC. And I'm not trying to old man it and say, do they not know the, the names Michael Jordan and Len Bias <laughs> and all the rest of them? I mean, okay, the ACC is a prestige conference every year. Yeah. North Carolina and Duke. And that's where the conversation begins. Pitt finished fourth in that conference they went 12 and 8 despite starting one and five yeah oh but they lost the game while you were eating your thanksgiving leftovers <laughs> Missouri, yeah. to a bad team. <laughs> that's gonna ding them Terrible. i have argued for the entirety of my sports fandom that the 20th century college football approach imperfect imperfect as it was what it accentuated was every game mattered. Yeah. If you lost your first game of the season, even if it was on September 1st, you lost control of your destiny, and that was heavy, and the stakes were great from the first chapter on. Everybody argued with me that that was dumb, and what you want with a playoff tournament is you want to accentuate the teams that are getting hot at the right time. 
Well, Pitt got hot at the right time, and TCU lost eight of its last 15, and <laughs> TCU is in the tournament. And it's Jamie Dixon, ironically enough, the former coach of the Panthers. Uh, Chris, um, any question? You want to talk to Dave? Say well, hi to Dave. I, to pop I, in? I was saying the same thing. Yeah. You, know, I, you know, I said, I think yesterday on your show, yeah. how could they let Virginia in this tournament? It's terrible. And forget Pitt. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I think Pitt mostly deserved, definitely deserved it over Virginia. But, I mean, St. John's had a beef. Indiana State. Indiana State definitely had a beef. And, you know, I think there's a lot of conference champions, you know, from the lesser conferences, yeah. quote unquote, lesser conferences that why do they not get a shot in a team like Virginia? And I think, uh, you know, Ryan gave you their record over the last, what, six, eight years, seven years. Eight years the yeah. aberration, yeah. the aberration is them winning one yep. championship. That The aberration was not them right. losing to UMBC. That yeah. the, the aberration is them winning. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. Hey, you know, as far as that goes, um, yeah, it, it, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by how you – because obviously the best source to go to to really divine who the better team is in any matchup, especially on uh, neutral courts, is someone like Chris Andrews. How do you possibly – because to my eye, there has never been more parity, and I do not like parity in any sport. I know that that's the goal – of commissioners and their network partners, and I understand why they have those incentives. Right. As a viewer, dominance is great. Dynasties are great. You want to witness the best and be able to make a case 40 years from now that you witnessed the best and all that kind of stuff. How do you make book on these games? Am I right that the difference between maybe leaving out the one seeds and maybe even the two seeds, I mean, the difference between a three seed, let's say, and a 14 seed has to be as narrow as it's ever been, right? Well, yeah. I mean, last night the first game was a perfect example. We put out uh, who? How was it? Wagner, Wagner, <laughs> Wagner, Wagner. Yeah, we put Wagner out as a two point favorite. They pounded us on here on Howard. We closed Howard a three point favorite. I mean, we really kind of thought the the game was a toss up. Essentially, Wagner played you know a little tougher schedule. You know, not much. It was yeah. you know very thinly sliced the difference. But you know, people had. Uh, their opinions and they bet it and you know dave we open the numbers and we know they're flawed and everybody what people don't understand is when you hit a number right on in the game like seven or oh you guys know you got right. that's the worst thing that can yeah. happen to us we don't want that we want some yeah, yeah, yeah. some sort of result one way or the other so that was a great great, great example yesterday but a lot i mean there's a lot of ambiguity i mean i could show you my notes someday we had i can't remember what game one of us had it uh like five or six and the other one you know other guys had it nine you okay. know i mean so you know it's tough and then we just kind of went in the middle and let the money dictate where we go that's where and, we go and, and dave before we get to football tell me you at least fill out a bracket <laughs> i have filled out zero brackets <laughs> really so you're the one i'm not doing any i'm not doing it. He's i'm not, not listening he's not done he's doing it i i I am going to do my best. I'm sure it'll be on. I'm sure I'll get swept <laughs> up. Not like I can get distracted by our favorite hockey team. Oh, so oh, that's oh. one thing. Less for <laughs> that's over. To distract myself. Season's but over. Right. I mean it. I mean it. So maybe I will end up tuning in. But I am, I am opposed to what we're seeing here. I'm not happy about it. Last basketball question um, is Chris Andrews. Do you, off the top of your head, because you are a savant with this kind of stuff when I've asked you these kind of questions before, I think it was 1985, my mother, Mo Damashek, greatest uh, parent in the history of uh, parents. How do I know this? Because she came in the middle of the day on a Thursday, took me out of school and took me home so that I could watch the Pitt Panthers play their opening round game against Carl Malone, the male. Yes, I remember that. I remember them. They lost that game. The Pitt Panthers did, but Dave Damashek won because Mo Damashek. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Cool. Let me guess. The number on that game. Do you know it off the top of your head? <sighs> I oh my don't. God. Oh, man. And I was booking that game and everything Now, else. is that Charles Smith, Jerome Lane era, right? Or is it a little before? That is 85, so that would have been freshman year. Right. Yeah. Okay, For I was going to say a little pick, before, right. yeah. Yeah. Jeez, and one I don't of, know. They should have won. We talked about it yesterday. But was it Barry Goheen? Barry Goheen? Barry, Do Barry Goheen hit the, the, the half quarter when he played for Vanderbilt that went to overtime, and then I think Pitt was a one or two seed. Yeah, that was our best uh, shot. I, it was after the Scotty Reynolds incident 
that uh, everybody said saddest moment in pit basketball history. Yeah. And obviously it's on the short list. I tracked down Barry Goheen it is Barry and Goheen. got him on my show. Did you really? Yeah. He, he, I mean, listen, don't bring up stuff unless you want me to, to no, spend I, 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 Barry Goheen. Minutes belly aching. <laughs> it's stuck in my head, that name, Barry <laughs> Goheen. And you tracked him down. He went, I mean, uh, first of all, Pitt, the, uh, the first thing with that is, Pitt got a bad slot there. Purdue was the one seed, if memory serves. Danny Manning's Kansas team that ends up winning ends up the winning title it, was right. the three seed. Um, Purdue quickly gets knocked off. They get upset, so it felt like, boy, this is it. The Panthers should really make a Final Four run here because the one thing that didn't beat that Pitt team of that era was one-man teams. They knew how to take away – your guy, and they would have been able with Chaz Smith and company to at least slow down Danny Manning. I know they won the national title and all of that, but that was not the Pitt Panthers' Achilles yeah. heel was getting one man beat. They had that game. They inbound the ball to Charles Smith with four seconds to go. He wraps it up like this instead of taking a dribble. If he takes one dribble with the ball, it burns another second, and they don't have time for uh. Goheen to make it. Chaz Smith goes down, makes two free throws, Goheen comes down, and D uh, Darrell Porter, oh, who man. my high school played, and he dropped 40 on us in the first half, and then they pulled him out of the game for the second Jeez. half because his work was done. Dar Darrell Porter slaps the balls. Barry Goheen goes yeah. up. He goes up, gets his hand on the ball, and he literally loses contact with the ball, regains it, and shovels it from three to the rim makes the three forces overtime yeah. people forget he also made uh, he, he also made another buzzer beater somewhere in that tournament and the whole thing oh, that name, yeah, and the, haunts me to this yeah, day yeah that Thanks name sticks in my head i'm sorry i brought up his name so what would have you made the line on uh, oh my Mailman, god i can't Louisiana remember Tech. you know i don't know about was, five or six something like that what was it what was it dave do you remember Oh, I don't, I don't know. I, oh, I thought you looked oh, it up. I, yeah, I, I thought you went to basketball reference I and had a, a, a number. No, I was I hanging know. on the, I was hanging 85. on 85. I'm trying, what year did, and we had him on yesterday, uh, the coach from our old high school, um, Matt Verjanic. Oh. When they took, uh, oh. they took Russell Cross and Purdue to the wire, Lo lose by two, I think. What year is that? Is that 86? I, I don't know. I Oh, I don't know. I see. I come in to the pit program around uh, the Dr. Roy Chipman. Years. Yeah, that's and, the same here. I'm with you. The Paul Evans and all yeah. that. Yeah. So that, I, I, yeah. Well, that's right. Remember? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Dr. Roy Chipman Admiral. was the first one I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. He came from Navy. I remember Admiral. Buzz Riddle. Yeah, Buzz Riddle. I remember you Buzz threw Riddle, that name yeah. at me one day. I didn't know Buzz Riddle. R I D L Riddle. Riddle. Uh, all right, Dave. We know. We listen. Ryan is here. Ryan is a, a Bears fan, as we know. Chris and I and you are both fans of the Steelers. Ryan did not want yeah. Justin Fields. What was that, Ryan? All three of you, yeah. Yes, you did not want Justin Fields traded. You wanted to hold on to him. You wanted to trade down, but it hasn't worked out that way. Instead, the Steelers quarterback room for about, what, three or four million dollars, under five million dollars. Yeah. We now have Wilson. We now have Fields. What do you think, Dave? How do you feel about this? It's a better team than last year, right? Well, by the end of this conversation, or maybe by the end of this sentence, there will be an update on the Steelers' transactions. Chris Andrews, uh, <laughs> nothing more flattering than getting a note from him saying, I'm listening to your podcast from three days ago uh, on Face. That's uh, as flattering as it gets. But he said, it's, it, it feels like it was five years ago based on all the things yeah. that have happened since then. Yeah. And, he's, and, he, and he's right. I, you know, I'm bummed. Um, as somebody born and raised, I, I don't know if I mentioned that, uh, if, if you've picked up that I enjoy pit sports, yes, I am with you. I'm with you pit basketball and pit football, the Panthers. Um, and you know, like I think a lot of Pittsburghers, not everybody, I thought it was cool spiritually that when you had this kid with the completion of the hall of famer, um, Ben Roethlisberger walking off in black and gold for the last time in the only uniform he ever wore in the NFL and passing that torch to the pit kid who walks across the hallway after playing <laughs> hero and resurrecting that pit program. Of course you take him at number 20 when you need a quarterback. <laughs> you can go back and say that wasn't the right pick and dude wasn't up for it and all that. You still, and I will advocate that that was the right move forever. I agree. Okay, Absolutely. we can get bogged down in the melodrama. I think it's worth pausing to say it's a bummer 
and whoever is to blame is whoever is to blame. It's sad that after two years, the pit hero is now gone from Pittsburgh. I think we should pause and pour one out. I, okay, I, I really on. do. And a lot of people have told me they don't care. A lot of people told me like, dude, who cares? I, who cares if he went to Villanova? He, went, he, he wasn't no good. So good. Move on from him. I'm like, I mean, are we that? Isn't Callous. part of what makes Pittsburgh, it's a, you know, as I keep saying, if Vegas had a native uh, at quarterback, I don't know that it would mean as much. If L.A., if the Rams started at quarterback, a guy who went to USC after growing up in Encino, I don't know that it would mean as much. In Pittsburgh, the guy played for Pitt for five years. We all know him. And now he's been shown the door. I think it's sad. I think yeah. it's I think it's too bad. It's one of the distinguishing features of the Steelers and the and, and the city, the mom and pop vibe in the, that big cutthroat um, industry and all that. But OK, they've moved on. Well, I, I, <laughs> I think, no, I got to agree. I yeah. mean, our, I, and I've made this point endlessly yeah our city is just different yeah it just is i mean you know we could talk about it all we want i mean it's just different (laughs) and dave hit it on hit on it pretty good i actually have a couple specific questions one you and i actually texted about um if they win those two games in the middle you know late towards late middle against new england and arizona with, with trubisky as a starter i mean Instead of being ten and seven, they're twelve and five. Yeah, I mean, we got a whole different narrative. Got a home game about uh, about Hopefully. the season, and maybe possibly about Pickett and, and and everything else. And you know, we we all know Tomlin was under some fire, and I'm going to get to that question too. Tomlin was under some fire, you know, late in the year. But Dave, you know, what did you think about uh, that? Like I said, we texted a little bit about it, but I like to hear your thoughts on the air. Well, I love going NFL. Right. On, uh, <laughs> he and, loves that, yeah. And, 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 and I do think, I, I, I mean, it is a fascinating one that no one will ever, people can say that they knew it, but we'll never actually know if you could go back yeah. to that drive against the Arizona Cardinals as the Steelers stand at six and, they're seven and four yeah. in that game. They could have been 10 and four if they the won win three games. Right. Yeah. Right. They're, they're, they're seven and four coming off the win. Uh, against the Bungles and everybody I was laughing at the time I have to admit that everybody was like the offense is completely different it's like they have three points at the end of three quarters <laughs> <laughs> it's not that different but yeah, okay. it's pretty similar I, I I I see what we're all seeing yes yeah. they do they do look different okay <laughs> they they're seven and four and they aren't great against the Cardinals but Pickett does look good in a couple of spots in the first half there it doesn't work out then he gets hurt at the you know inside the five on that run And they put Trubisky in. Now, understand, too, that part of my cynicism, I think Mike Tomlin can turn most any roster into a competitive one. You know, I am not. I do not turn my nose up. I do not think it's a small matter that he always has a winning record. I know a lot of people disagree with that and say, what's the standard now? And nationally, people are saying, who cares about winning records if you don't win in January? I get the sentiment. Nevertheless, I think he's a winner. I also think he doesn't have a great command of the quarterback room. Witness the fact that after Pickett gets hurt, he goes with Trubisky for that second half against the Cardinals. Trubisky looks very bad. They play Trubisky again against New England. Okay, they get that evidence. The reason they lose that game is Mitchell Trubisky is bad. He's real (laughs) bad in that game. And you feel like, see, and I remember saying to people, now do you appreciate Pickett a little bit more? After that game, I assumed, okay, now they'll flip the switch to Mason Rudolph out of desperation. Nope, we're putting him in there against Indianapolis. <laughs> he stinks again and is the primary reason they lose that game. Forget about Trubisky winning those games or the misery. This is the this is the issue about blind trust in like, well, if Mike Tomlin, Omar Khan, and the brain trust thinks that Russ and Justin Fields is a better ver- is a better or is an upgrade to Rudolph slash Pickett. We got to roll with that. These are the people who didn't understand that Mason Rudolph in the room was way, way better yeah. than Mitchell Trubisky, who they insisted on rolling with. So I'm skeptical of their decision making ability at QB. But to Chris's point, obviously right at seven and four. Let's say they rally. That's a close game against the Cardinals and 
critical turnovers by uh, a critical turnover by Trubisky, some bad defense. Uh, you know, you'll remember that back to back drives on either side of the half. They mm-hmm. were targeting the tight end over and over. They had no answer. Still, oh, that young kid, the Steelers yeah, should have won that game. Yeah. Let's at, let's at worst, at worst, let's say that the Steelers win two out of those three. The Patriots were an atrocity. The Colts were not playing well. And the Cardinals team was real bad. I think they get two out of three there. So at minimum, they're nine and five there. Rudolph never goes in. We never see what Rudolph is about. Instead, we are probably, we have a completely different perception of Kenny Pickett. And remember, a lot of what our thoughts are about Kenny Pickett were developed while he was with the offensive coordinator who people were at hockey games chanting to get fired because he was such <laughs> such an awful, were, awful yeah. coach. <laughs> so Kenny Pickett got the benefit of fewer than six quarters to show himself without Matt Canada. Then he has to sit down. Now he picks his head up, and Mason Rudolph is getting all the flowers from teammates and beyond. I completely get that kid's frustration, but if you take away – that tough moment of like, wait, you're going to stick with this guy. I just went through that ankle surgery to get back as quickly as possible. And you're not putting me back in. I kind of get the competitive. Don't I get my job back frustration? He handled it poorly. But to Chris's point, if that injury doesn't happen, I think we're in a completely different world right now. Um, And, and, you know, again, I'm going to, I got another question to ask you, but I think you're right about one thing that, you know, Tomlin, he stumbled into Roethlisberger. Yeah, I mean, Roethlisberger was, was already established was as one of the league's best, you know, and he he never had to deal with a quarterback issue. I mean, yeah, Ben was if Ben was healthy, he was playing. Period. That that's the way it goes. And the guy was going to be one of the best in the league. Now all of a sudden, Ben's gone. And by the way, guy said, "Well, they stuck with Roethlisberger too long. Why? Who was available yeah. that they could have taken? <laughs> yeah. You know, no, they didn't. Uh, but now he he has Pickett and Rudolph and Trubisky, and man, that he fan on that. Yeah. I mean, listen, Pickett. Okay, that okay. Trubisky yeah. instead of Rudolph. I liked Rudolph a lot coming out of college. I thought he was a good third Saw round throw for 400 yards against, against Pitt, Pitt yeah. in the first half and yeah. the Washington I mean, receiving. It, yeah. You know, I the know he's thing, slow of foot, yeah. but he has a great arm. Yeah. Right. With Arthur Smith. And that is uh, something that, uh, that Tomlin apparently covets and has for some time is, uh, is the, uh, a quarterback who can move a little yeah. bit. Um but it is funny, and the irony of Mason Rudolph, what does he do best, is throw that beautiful deep ball. You know, isn't mm-hmm. that the, the number one thing that Russell Wilson enthusiasts are citing? Like, still throws that, that beautiful deep <laughs> ball. Can't do anything else he ever did, but eh, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think yeah, Chris, uh, Chris nails it there in terms of uh, the, the evaluation. It, I think we're allowed to be a little skeptical that they're getting this one right. But I also think... To the point about Trubisky, based on what we saw two years ago, rolling with the guy who they signed in free agency, then they draft, obviously, first round. Pickett, they don't put Pickett in. They go with Trubisky until he flops. I think that now we're in an interesting spot, which is, as Steelers fans going into 24, is we want and understand that Fields is the guy who has upside. Russ is what Russ is, and it's going. That ceiling is lowering down ever further with each passing (laughs) season. But we also know, based on Tomlin's behavior, if the if Russ's contributions provide are, are part of a winning premise to open the season, that he's going to ride with Russ until he flops. So I think what we want That's is right. this mediocre to bottom third quarterback in the NFL to succeed on the level that Kenny Pickett did a year ago, which is just keep winning games 12 to 11. You yeah. don't give a crap <laughs> just as long as we keep winning. And so I think that's what we're rooting for all over again. I think a lot of this is it, it's not much ado about nothing because of the back, you know, the, the, the stuff in uh, behind the scenes and all that. But I do think in X's and O's terms, I know Arthur Smith's going to have a completely different style yes. of offense, but really it's very lateral in terms of the qual- overall quality of play you're going to get from that position. Once again, the Steelers are going to try to work around the conference of superhero quarterbacks by bullying them and having the best roster to go up against these individual yeah. dominant quarterbacks to populate the AFC. Well, the play action is what uh, everyone's talking well, about. That Smith, Smith yeah. wants. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Um, by the way, the rumor out there with Justin Jefferson 
uh, as a possibility to the Steelers. I don't know. I know it's not going to happen. But the Bengals obviously wanted him to reunite with Burrow. But I have seen that Jefferson. That they that that's that's a rumor you see out there. I, I don't well, know. If Russ can throw that deep ball like uh, Mason Rudolph could. Uh, I don't know what say. we'd give up for that. But I don't see it happening. But it's just fun to dream about for okay. a couple minutes. I, I have another specific yeah, question to ask, Dave. You mentioned this on your podcast, I think yesterday, that uh, you know Omar Khan is getting a lot of credit for making these moves, and I think financially. And risk-wise, I think it was a great move by the Steelers, no matter what happens this year. I think it was the good move. But you think that it's Tomlin that has really spurred this on and Khan did the execution of the the plan. Is is that right, Dave? And could you explain that? I don't have much question that that's the case. Tomlin is, you know, he is in charge. Um, And, yeah, Tomlin, I mean, uh, I should say Khan, is magnificent in his role. I mean, boy, he really, you know, all the the metaphors about poker playing and all that and how icy cool he is and waiting it out and letting it come to him. I think those things are all valid. I, of course, I'm not in that uh, in that room. Um, and, and as everybody who has any proximity to the Steelers understands, nobody's talking in that building. No, <laughs> None of the decision makers talk players and their agents talk so you might pick up some stuff from them but if you think that he's like i'm hearing from inside the building you're not hearing it from any of the people (laughs) that are involved in the decision so it's all speculative to some degree but yeah i do think my sense is that ownership and tomlin sort of understand that things are a little bit different and this has been the roethlisberger half decade or so um had uh, to me, I you know I enjoyed it. I I, I really did yeah. this transition. It was bad from the moment his elbow gets hurt. I can kind of talk my way, and I'm not trying to make excuses for my team. I obviously would like them to win Lombardies as well, but I can make sense of the way that went year to year with the quarterback specifically. And by the way, it's some of Tomlin's greatest work is what he did with Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph in 2019 <laughs> right. after that yeah. injury. And by the way, same is true. We knew at 11 and 0 that Steelers team oh wasn't Super Bowl worthy. Right. But again, Tomlin and the the um, the premise that is developed in that building is different than the, what you see for most successful 21st century NFL teams. But um, it's why I'm I remain bullish even uh, on where the Steelers are tracking this year. I think that to Chris's point, what they have created with Omar Khan here, and that's that's his main virtue is look at what he's done bringing in these guys a a, a quarterback room worth now what is it now like three and a half million dollars or something under five under five yeah i mean what it allows you it's the same thing that people talk all the time about what you want is having your franchise qb still on his rookie deal this gives you the same situation essentially which is we can flesh out that roster way better than you can Bengals with uh, Joe Burrow and all that money same thing with Mahomes and KC and so on and I think that's exactly what they're going to try to do so as far as Justin Jefferson goes I know there's there's a semi need let's not overstate it yes right I get all that (laughs) I do hear that they you know some of those guys in the draft are appealing as well um I kind of am inclined to lean into to what they are doing with Khan and Wide, which is just loading up at the line of scrimmage, just really push yep. those pretty boy teams in the AFC around a little bit and, and see if you can close the gap that way. But yeah, I, I do think this is much more Tomlin's vision. I think he feels um, a different sense of urgency than he's had in the last couple of years. I would um, agree. We, we oh, can, yeah, you can glean that maybe that's ownership providing that sense of urgency for him. He still doesn't have the extension at this point. We can talk about all that. But, yeah, I think that then Khan is able and Weidel are able to identify um, the available options to fulfill what Mike Tomlin wants to have done and what uh, what the Roonies would like to see happen. Well, I, I like the direction that we've taken. I do too, yeah. You know, that's all I could tell. You know, and listen, they're talking about – Maybe a quarterback to draft. I mean, it's still they always the, have a the draft camp guy. So yeah. if he, you know, we talked about it, you know, yeah. Trevor Lawrence out of that one draft, the only guy that's okay. Yeah, and he's not Andrew Luck like they thought he was. <laughs> Your favorite, you know? Yeah, I know. It's his anyway, favorite non-Steelers, Andrew is, Luck. Yeah, I know. It's I know. the only <laughs> jersey I have. Uh, I got it as a gift, but I wear it occasionally. <laughs> the Steelers aren't playing that day. All right, real quickly, just to wrap up on this, what's the over/under on Steeler wins this year? Right now, as the team stands before the draft, what do you think? Out of seventeen games, how many wins? 
blindly, no draft, right. anything, injuries that'll happen in August and all that. The absolute floor is 10 wins. Oh, I told people oh, wow. that absolute floor. They yeah. went ten and seven with last that team. Year. Yeah, right. He's less optimistic than me. I was going to say eleven or eleven and a half. Yeah, right. I mean, that's right. Oh, oh, my expectation is eleven. <laughs> it's twelve or thirteen. Yeah. And, and also, hear what I'm saying. I do not think we have an advantage. In fact, I think I, I have some real concern that maybe that we are again in the bottom third among QB. And but I, on a Mike Tomlin team. No matter in the regular season, you're going to get the double digit wins. Yep. Well, we need a center. We Panther need a tackle. Panther. I like That's what it. Dave's saying. Whoa. Uh, Panther, there, you hold it up oh, again. Wait, Dave. Throw it again. Hang on. Throw I it saw up. a pan Panthers Panther football. football. Okay. I uh, and by Panther. the way, let me oh. say one more thing. Yeah. You're from sort of our hometown. What do you mean? <laughs> no way. Because Dave is from my oh, hometown. Oh, okay. I'm North. North Hills. I'm yeah. North. Hills, and by yeah. the way, Dave, through some <laughs> half assed marriages and stuff like that, is an in law to my college roommate. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Terry Neely. Yeah, Jeez. I gave Terry a shout out. Tell Scott Neely you're uh, you're a little closer. Oh, I talked to I talked to Uncle Scott and the rest of the gang the day that uh, Russell F uh, Russell Wilson happened, and uh, we talked about and we talked about you, and basically had the conversation the three of us just had. Last I love week, it. So. I love that you almost called him Russell Fields, but let's call let's call her let's 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 trademark that Russell Fields, baby. I like that. Uh, Dave, always a pleasure, Love man. Uh, well, you're the best. Dave. Talk to you Thank more about you. football. Don't fill out a bracket. I like that you're sticking. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Tell oh, everybody okay. your podcast. Tell oh, everybody yeah, your podcast. Yeah, I was going to get Come to on, that. You got yeah. to go with your podcast. It's one of the best out there. Yeah, it's great. Minus three podcast uh, twice a week. I just did extra points. Appreciate you. Next time, let's talk about, I got to tell you my story about why Bill Robinson is a hero for all of oh. time, transcending just what he did out in left field for the bad luck. Okay, Buckos. the Pirates. Yeah, okay. That's what I was talking about. 79, yeah. Well, and Rick Roden, by the way, who used to come into our video store, they got in that fist fight. I was at that oh, game. Is that right? Yeah, I was there. That was uh, Three Rivers. Yeah, they, yeah, they jabbed. Yeah, he was an ex-Pirate. Roden went after him. And yeah, all right, we'll save the Bill Robinson oh, story. Love I love it. it. Love it. All right, Dave. Thanks again, man. Dave, Dave appreciate thank you. 75 and a half. Let's go, Buckos. Yes, Hockey's I'm. for nerds. It's I, over with. Yes. I, I just moved it to. 76. We're 76. Yeah. Well, O'Neill Cruz is a good killing. number. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Dave. Chris, hold on one second. Uh, thank you, Dave Damashek. Yes. Thank you so much. And everyone watching, we have a collage that Ryan made, and I want you oh, here okay. for this real okay. quick. Yeah. These are number 14s. Now, during Dave's interview, I, I looked at it. I think I have them all, except for one I'm a little confused about. Go for and it. there is a tie to our hometown. So is that DK Metcalf? Yes, it is. The White Sox is Paul Canerco. It is Paulie. Oh, oh, now, one. is number 14 in the Bengals, is that is that Ken Anderson? Yes, yeah. it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, behind him, Jim Rice for Boston, my favorite non-pirate when I was a kid. Okay. I paid $4 for a signed Jim Rice card, and it was my most prized possession. I don't know where the hell it is. I'm skipping the Viking. I'm skipping the Viking unless anyone knows who for is it. It's one of two guys. He's not on the Vikings. Is, is that anymore. Stephon Diggs? Minneapolis Miracle. Okay, okay. That, that's, yeah. I'm in, the black oh. and white. Now, the black and white picture, Chris, the reason I stop on this is I'm pretty sure that picture was taken at Pitt Stadium. Oh, is that uh, Y.A. Tittle? Is that Y.A. Tittle? It is Y.A. Tittle. Who I met the night the Giants beat the Patriots. I, oh, yeah? Long story. My no, wife, go my, for it. My, my wife was in the hospital in, in Stanford. Okay. And there's a, I can't even remember the place. It's like the pizza place where everybody goes. I go to get a pizza after the game, blah, blah, blah. There's Y.A. Wow. Who played for the Giants. Yeah. yeah so, we, hey, J, hey, Y.A., what are you doing? Oh, yeah, it's just, you know. Yeah. Unbelievable, and that that was that's that's one of the yeah. most famous sports pictures yeah. ever, and I believe it's in the end zone. He's bleeding, and that right. that yeah. was his last game. And I'm yeah. almost positive it's Pitt Stadium. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All it right, is. that all right. I'm going for the perfect score here. I see Dan Fouts, one of my also favorite fan, non Steelers. Uh, the, the I'm going with Bob Cousy. Is that Bob Cousy? It is Bob Cousy, the head king, Pete Rose, and then last but not least, let's play two. You have Ernie Banks, Mister yeah. Cub, Mister Good, Mr. good Cub. job, yeah. Well, I had some time to look at it. I'll yeah, be honest. The I, entire episode. <laughs> the one that I wasn't sure about was Canerco. I couldn't tell. I'm like, wait, that's Paul Canerco. And then I wasn't sure that this, the handlebar, that I knew that was Ken Anderson or was it Brian Sipe from the Browns because they look similar. But then I looked at the stripes. And I went, no, that's a Bengals. I think that's uh, the Bengals. And I wasn't sure if it was Diggs or Jefferson. But, yeah, that YA Tittle picture. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if it was Autogram or YA Tittle. So. A lot of grams in like number 68 or okay, something so, like that. Some <laughs> weird number, yeah. we got, and Pete Rose, who doesn't he live here? Does he, he live in Vegas? He should. <laughs> I, I'm sure he has several houses. But yeah, he made an appearance at the, the ballpark Yeah, last he year. was at the ballpark last yeah. week, I think a couple weeks ago, right? And wasn't he there for the, uh, the college tournament? Damn. All right, we got to get Pete Rose on the show somehow.
Somehow get Pete Rose. This will be his Hall of Fame. This will be his Hall of Fame, damn it. All right, thank you, Keith Lyle. That was great. He was outstanding. Make sure you catch him at Hennessy's downtown on Fremont Street tonight through Sunday. Dave Damashek's got like two or three podcasts. Always a pleasure to have on to talk about the hometown. And Chris Andrews, uh, you took the Pirates to 76 wins? I didn't take them there. The money took them there. Okay, there you, you go. The the money, that's a good name for a book. The money took them there. Ooh. Which, by the way, if you watch the opening video, uh, if you watch the video of me watching baseball getting up uh, late for the game on my nightstand, Chris's book. Yeah. If you actually opened it. I have. It, yeah. I'm jumping through. I have a postcard in there that I'm reading. It. I'm almost complete. And then I will. we will sit down and have dinner that you get comp for us somewhere. We'll talk about it. <laughs> where's, where's the postcard from? The postcard is uh, it's, uh, it's an old Sinatra doobie. It's an old oh, okay. Sinatra postcard. Okay. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right. Anyway, thank you uh, for everyone helping. Chris, thank you for putting this sheet out. I, I actually got two bets on that. You you yeah. made bets? No, I mean, oh, make you've the bets. Two I make the line. I'm oh, not that's making right. oh, a bet. Wait, people, two people have bet on two it? Two people have bet on it. And will this be on the app or they got to come down to the South It's Park? not on the app. Yeah, you the come reason down. it's not on the app is because it's it. I can't list all those teams. Sure. You know, okay. I don't want to confuse anybody. No, no, no. You know, so come in if you want to bet that. Two bets. Do you know who the bets were on? Can you say? One was on Alex. Oh. <sighs> One was not on Frank. I, <laughs> I can't remember who else was. All right. Well, anyway, the bets are coming in, so make sure you get your bets in. Uh, on this is this is so cool for you to do. Thank you, Chris. This is great. Uh, Ryan, any closing thoughts, sir? Yeah. Before we go, any any viewers still there? Oh. <laughs> We're five minutes over. The other night, you guys went forty. 40-